You're rolling this? Yeah. Well, this is perfect timing. So the nice thing is, like right now, it's at close focus. This is infinity. And I know with this camera from here, she's about three meters away. If I go to about seven o'clock, take a picture, and you'll see the picture now, perfectly in focus. So when I record these videos, I'm not sitting obviously in my office chair. Um, I'm actually sitting on a Ikea stool because that's how the height kind of works out to be in line with this and not have anything behind me. Uh, quite simply, it's uncomfortable. My ass hurts. It's really uncomfortable. And if anyone knows uh, where I can get a good stool with a cushion on it, a little support for the gluteus maximus, let me, that's what I want to know in the comments. That's, that's actually what I really want to know. Up to this point, I've given you a really extensive review of the Leica M11, and I've also made a bit of a comparison of this camera to the camera that I replaced in my photography kit. This video is different in that it's, it's more personal, where those videos I'm really pulling from my experiences to sort of give you perspective on the products. Here I want to talk about my personal reason why I made the decision to switch from one ecosystem to another. Because here's the thing, when you, when you switch cameras up like this and mounts and even the post-production workflow, it's a monumental shift. And it could even fuck up your business in a way. So you gotta take a lot of consideration. And when you switch from one tried and tested solution to something that just released, man, that's a gamble. For me, there were three reasons. Three reasons why I ultimately decided to move from one camera ecosystem to another. Now, I won't say that they were three equal reasons. I think that there's one big one, there's one almost as big one, and there's a smaller one. But nonetheless, these are the three reasons why I decided to move from my Fujifilm X-Pro3 to the Leica M11. been watching my channel for a while you know that with respect to my photography there's three camera slots you know I have the Fujifilm GFX 100 s for professional and client work I have the Fujifilm X 100 V which I I dubbed one of my perfect cameras one of my Mount Rushmore cameras I just use it as a carry around for street for casual for family that kind of stuff and then I have this slot in the middle that kind of takes the best of both worlds that has to be you know a bit more unique. It has to deliver better in some ways, but also pull from the benefits of these other two cameras that I have. Really what the first reason is all about is the process. When you specialize in your photography, in your craft, um, you start to prioritize different features that will make your photography experience more enjoyable, less friction, or I should say frictionless, that, boy, that would have been perfect if I just used the right word the first time. You'll want to have something that caters to your creative process, right? I mean, I mean, think about a budding chef, you know, they may start with an Ikea knife at home and as they get more and more proficient, they might save up and get a much nicer chef's knife for the work that they do. And that's kind of what I wanted in this second slot of a camera. A lot of the attraction for a Leica M camera, even in their digital offerings, is that there's a strict limitation in what the technology does and what you have to be responsible for as the end user. Modern cameras, especially smartphones, have coddled users. You know, they, they have really democratized the image creation process. And this is a great thing, really, because now billions of people can now capture images with ease. However, when you look at specific scenarios, especially enthusiast and professional scenarios, this simplification, this sort of um, abstraction, if you will, where a lot of these layers are being removed and a lot of decisions are being made for you, 
this can be a deterrent. Think of the times where your camera missed focus. Think of the times where your camera failed to fire. Think of the times where the exposure reading was off. Think of the times where you accidentally moved a setting. Think of the times where the white balance reading was off. Think of the times where the viewfinder or LCD glitched out on you. These are all points of failure. They might not be permanent, but they are points of failure that might get in between you and the image. For me, you know, looking at the places that we go, the images that create, in my kit, I wanted at least one option where all these possible scenarios, all these points of failure, well, I could just mitigate them because of the camera that I had. And with a camera like a Leica, like a Leica, here we go again. With a camera like this, it mitigates so much of that, that especially when I have it in complete manual control, there are less things to go wrong. On an M11, like any M body, there is no autofocus. You develop the muscle memory. And if you get good, you can also zone focus without even looking through the viewfinder and catch focus faster than a digital camera with autofocus would. There's also no electronic viewfinder. You have this clear zero latency window to the world. And depending on the lens that you use, you can see outside of the frame to really compose your image and even anticipate the image that's about to happen. Now compound this with this specific camera, the M11, you also have a battery that can last for days and days and days and can charge more conveniently than previous M bodies. When you look at a camera like this, when you have your aperture rating, your shutter speed, your ISO, your white balance, and even your exposure compensation, when you have these settings locked in place, there really isn't another point of failure. Whereas in other digital offerings, at least in my experience, there are more points of potential failure. So the biggest reason why I switched to Leica, if you're asking me, is the process. Really, it comes down to less really is more, where having less automation, less technology, led to a more reliable experience that in the times that I've been using this and pushing this thing, it felt like there was less things to go wrong and I was gonna get a good picture more times than not. You've heard the saying before, right? A rising tide lifts all boats. And that's kind of what happened here. Last year, when I officially integrated a GFX 100S into my camera kit, that I wouldn't be renting one. I would actually own and operate one. It changed my expectations in a way because the GFX 100S has the best dynamic range and, and rich files that I've ever experienced. And you know, I think it still edges out the Leica but it just made me expect more from my work. I like the idea of having equipment that has a higher ceiling than my you know, creative expertise. And so when I had this camera and started using it, I started to think, man, what if I could get close to this quality in a super compact form factor? Does that exist? Does that exist? Can I get a camera closer to this GFX, but you know, was comfortable in the street? And, you know, there's some offerings from Sony and Canon and they're not considerably smaller, especially when you factor some of their best lenses. And I don't know, they never really appealed to me with their offerings. I've used a bunch of them, not really my style. The real offering here, the real competitor was from Leica. They had the M10R at that point and looking at some of the files and what this image can produce, it really closed the gap between what a compact full frame camera could do and what a digital medium format could do. Now fast forward to the M11 and what this was, you know, talked up to be and then ultimately what I experienced, that gap is really close. The files, the product, if you will, from this M11 are incredibly rich. There is so much dimension to them. The, the micro contrast, the dynamic range, they really stand out. When I'm editing the pictures, as I push them, with the grade, as I sort of manage the darkest points and the lightest points, you really appreciate the difference. 
the image that is the second most important reason almost equal to the first reason why i ultimately switched over i, I wanted something that can fit in my hands that i can sling across my shoulder take all over the world take it to the studio and it could complement my gfx but even in the absence in the absence look at that in the absence and the light goes out hold that thought i wanted a solution that you know, even in the absence of a GFX 100S could, could produce these rich files, regardless of what environment I was in. That this, you know, second option here, the second slot in my camera kit really exceeded expectations. So that if a image was captured and it needed to be printed on a 13 by 19 or going for print on a billboard or going for a digital campaign, no matter what, there was so much latitude with the file. And it's not just resolution. It's not just resolution, even though resolution is an important conversation here. It is truly the quality of the file. The quality of the file is the second most important reason why I ultimately decided to switch over to Leica. The third reason is, comparatively speaking, much smaller than the previous two. And it's something that might piss off a bunch of people. And it should because it's the priorities. When you look at how the Leica brand views the photography space, and you're critical of sort of how they talk to and communicate with this space, you can tell that they genuinely care, that they genuinely care about the art form. From the galleries that they support, from the grants they provide, from the awards that they get behind, from the stories, that they create and the publications, the magazines that they support, you can tell that they truly give a shit. There's also this transparency. I don't think it's journalistic integrity. No, they are a, you know, a company at the end of the day. It's, it's transparency. It's a level of transparency that this company has that's unlike other brands in the imaging space. Now, I don't wanna conflate this into something that's like, other camera companies, their employees don't care about photography. That's, no, that's not, that's not true because how else would you retain talent in your imaging departments? What I'm trying to highlight here is that as a company directive, Leica seems to care more about the photography space than most other brands. Now, I can already hear some of my friends at Canon, Sony, and Fujifilm saying, what do you mean Leica cares more about photography than us? Look, I'm not going to turn this video, I'm not gonna exhaust people uh, by turning this video into a review of Leica's FY22 marketing campaign and initiatives, that's not what I'm going to do. What I'll do is turn the conversation back to you, if you are asking that question. Look at the ambassadors you choose, look at the opportunities they have, look at the images that you curate across your social channels, look at the initiatives you get behind, look at the stories that you share, do you run away from controversy or do you embrace it and, and use that to highlight important social issues? Looking across the board and answering these questions honestly, there is no close race here. Leica really embraces the photography space and they're willing to go out on a limb for what they believe in. Or what I should say is that their users and their photographers believe in. As a photographer, as a marketer, as a father, you know, when I'm looking at all these brands, it's very clear to me that one brand prioritizes photography in a more authentic way than others. And that's not to say that everyone else sucks. It just means that with respect to this conversation, in this race, there's one clear leader to me. And now you might be wondering, why is this an important reason? How is this an important reason? Why would you use this as a reason to switch from one brand to another, even if it is for just one camera? We're all just fickle creatures, right? We're trying to find purpose and, and meaning in our creative journeys. And when you can inject some purpose and meaning into the tools that you use, it makes the experience more meaningful in a weird way. You start to appreciate more 
of the journey when you can have these tools that sort of line up with your values and your beliefs and what you think is important. I don't think it's necessary for everyone, but the further down the journey you go, the more successful that you get, the less obstacles you have to acquiring these tools, and I guess you can say in that regard, all things were meaning equal, you will, I believe, value things like this a bit more than the average person. So the third reason, and it might not be a big reason, it really is a small reason with respect to the previous two, is the priorities of the brand and how they see photography. And, and something that, you know, really pushed me over the edge to say, you know what, let's go ahead and get the thing and see what the next five years look like. This video wasn't created to convince any of you to switch and it certainly wasn't created for me to justify my position. I, I wanted to just create a discussion, a dialogue around my personal journey. I know many of you have been following these videos for a long, long time and, and you've shared countless times, whether it's on Instagram or Twitter and even in these comments, how much my work has meant to you. I am super grateful for all of that. So I want to create a video that kind of expressed my personal journey gives you a little bit more visibility into why I'm making the decisions that I'm making. Um, and there might be some, you know, solidarity there. But I will say, um, I hope that you're not sort of using this to just blanket justify your next purchase. I'm looking at the links. Uh, a ton of you are using the affiliate links and, and supporting me and I truly appreciate that. Uh, I'm exceeding way more than I, I would have imagined this year beginning. But let me also stress that when you're making your next purchase, always look at your specific journey and always look at, you know, with a critical lens, how one tool might benefit your work and how it might help you grow as a creator. Um, again, I appreciate all the clicks and, and the affiliate purchases, but always look to make your next purchase with intention and really be thinking, you know, how much is this gonna help my work? Can I put this off or is there an alternative that might bring me more value? like a good light. And there you have it. Those are the three reasons why I switched over to Leica. Um, what's more interesting is let me know what made you switch to Leica. If you've switched over to Leica, and especially if you switched over from Fujifilm, let me know in the comments, is it any of these reasons or is there a different reason altogether? I'd love to know in the comments. I'd also love to know reasons why you haven't switched to Leica or won't switch to Leica. And hey, let's keep it civil in the comments, okay? We're all adults here. Let me know that as well. You know, that's also a conversation that I'm not gonna shy away from. Whatever it may be, let's continue the conversation in the comments down below. As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.